Okay. Chit chat over. Okay. Today's Pasha is Pasha's Truma, as you all know. And um, I send you, it tells Moshe to, to alert the people that they should give Truma. They should give Truma. Truma essentially means they should give um, a gift or its daughter. And essentially, this is for the, ultimately for building the Mishkan and everything associated with the Mishkan. As you've learned in the Rashi, Rashi right away explains that there are three different types of Truma that this pastor talks about. Truma is mentioned three times right in the first Tupsukim, and each one refers to a different aspect of Truma, of a gift. And one of these three, one is, as Rashi explains, um, Truma Sa'adani, the Truma of the, that they, they provided the silver, the actual silver metal to build the Adanim. The Adanim were the basis of the Mishkan. The Mishkan, as you have already learned, were, were of boards, uh, and, um, and, and, and they, these boards were put into silver, uh, chunks heavy uh, squares of silver which held the boards down. These were called the Adanim. These are the basis, the basis of the Mishka. And then there is also um, the Korbon, the, the um, gift for the Korbonis because in the Mishka they had to be Makiv bring an offering every day twice daily, as you know, what they call them Tommy, the scope. And then, and then there are, there were the gifts to build the Mishkan, everything else. The, the cost of building a building and providing all the materials, the silver and copper and essentially gold, copper and, and uh, wood and, and different woolens, different type of wools and different type of, 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 uh, of flax and cottons and so forth and uh, hides. And um, uh, Rashi also explains there that of these three different types of gifts, two of them were were um, g were given by everyone, every one of the Jewish people equally. This was a half a shekel. Max is a shekel. Everyone has to give the same amount, a half a shekel. This half shekel, there are two sets of half shekel. One was in order to build the Adanim, and the other one was in order to build, to buy the korbanis, the, the sheep for the korbanis. And then the third uh, category of gift was entirely arbitrary, um, um, voluntary. Everyone gave according to their desire, to their own own uh, decision. First two were half a shekel? First two were half a shekel of equal amounts. The, um, in the POSIC itself, I don't know if you would remember, but I'll remind you, hopefully you'll be able to relate to it. 
In the Posuk itself, these th- three type categories of gifts are referred to in the following words. Yikhu li truma. You should tell him, when I saw, I'll tell the Jewish people, Yikhu li truma. They should take a truma for me. Which means for Hashem. The second reference is when it says Tikhu es trumosi at the end of the that post Tikhu es trumosi you should take my truma and the third is referred to by the next post where it says Vezois ha truma se Tikhu miito this is the truma that you should take from them these are the three the three different expressions of truma and they refer to three different categories of truma. I'm mentioning this because this would be germane to, uh, to the sikha that I'm going to relate to you. Um, so in a sikha, Rebbe points out, interesting elements. In the first truma it says, V'yikhu li truma. They should take for me a truma. Rashi says, li, was it li for me? It means li lishmi. It has to be in my name. In other words, this truma has to be done intentionally and had, there has to be a special a special kavonda, so to speak, a special intent when this truma is, is being dedicated. And it has the quality that it is made specially for Hashem. Second truma, it says trumosi, my truma. Again, Hashem is is mentioned in conjunction with this truma. The third truma, it says vezeis ha truma shetikum yitom. This is the truma you should take from them, and there is no reference, no correlation from that truma between that truma and Hashem. Hashem is not mentioned in conjunction with that room. The significance of these of these differences we will explain. This is what the Sikh is based on. It's a very, very interesting, insightful Sikh. That explains that to understand the, the background and the nuances nuances um, um, the, 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 the hidden implications you know the subtle implications the differences between these trumas um, you will understand them by finding their corresponding element in Avoida. Because each one of these Truma has a corresponding thing, um, element in Avoida, in, in Avoida, in Ruchnis. In Avoida Hashem, in Ruchnis. In Avoida, we know that there are three categories of Avoida. More than three categories of Avoida? Anybody? That's levels. Two types of Avoida. What? I'm sorry? Yeah, one. Carbonus. <laughs> Carbonus, that's him as a Nikdush. True. And how would that correspond by us? Huh? Tefillah. <coughs> so why do we have tefillah? No. So that's basically one. Torah. Torah. Mitzvahs. Mitzvahs. Okay, you see what it means? What, what, what group? Putting things together, you know, the group effort? Now they got them all, right? 
Torah, Avedo, and Gmilos Hasodim, essentially Torah and Philo and Mitzvahs. These are the, generally speaking, this is, this, these three categories encompass, encompass, but it includes every aspect of Avedo Hashem, of Jewish Avedo. And in the Bezamigdosh, this was also <coughs> the name of, of Torah and, and Korbonis and so forth. And, and then it's Dog. Corresponding to the three Trumas in the Mishkon, which when you say they are done, building of the bases, and then the Korbonis, and then building the rest of the Mishkan, the general gifts. Torah, which is the basis, the basic principle, the basis of all of Eidim. This corresponds to the Adonim. But just like this, the Adonim, this is what supports the whole Mishkan. Torah is what gives support to the entire the entire uh, Jewish life. Avoida, that corresponds to the Avoida Zakorbonis. That corresponds to Avoida Zakorbonis. And we know that uh, that Avoida davening corresponds to Avoida Zakorbonis. That's the second one. And the third one, is mitzvahs, which a person does throughout the whole day. And that corresponds to the, uh, to the meaning from building the Mishkan in general. Now, coming down to the more specific elements that we have identified, By Torah, when the Torah speaks about Torah, which is the first one, Tikhuli Truma, Tikhuli Truma, that's the first one. So it says there, there are two elements that that are uh, that are different than the other places. One is Tikhuli Li Truma. There's Li for me. And else also it says V'yikhum. V'yikhum means they should take. What should properly have been said? Huh? Bring. Bring or give. V'yitnu. It says V'yikhum. What is the implication of the word V'yikhum? Torah, even though that we learn Torah with our sake and we definitely try and, and hopefully succeed to an extent to understand what the Torah is saying, but the, the, the understanding that we have of Torah is we understand what Hashem is telling us to understand, not that we, that we formulate Torah with our own sake. Torah is something which was given to us, and we learned the Torah that was given, as it was given. This is why it says V'yikhu, but this is something that they have to take. Torah is something that, even though I said we learn it, but we learn it by accepting it, by taking it. We take it, and then we understand to the extent that we are able to understand. <coughs> and therefore, here it says also, um, Li Trumo, because this is, the Torah is Hashem's Torah. That's why Hashem's presence is mentioned in, in association with this tool. 
But this is something which is which, with which you associate with Hashem directly, and you're actually receiving something from Hashem. That's what he says, V'yikhuli truma. The second truma refers to a way that filo of Davni. Tfilo is much more closely associated with the person himself. Tfilo is something which, which he has to fully be, be able to relate to what he is saying, both with his mind and heart. <coughs> so that in Tfilo, the word in the Torah is trumosi. Hashem becomes part of the person's thinking. Trumosi means my truma, which means that the word truma, which refers to the person's gift, truma is his gift, the human gift. And Hashem, this is infer- which is implied by the word trumosi, are included in the very same word. In the same word, there is a mention of, of the human being, of our effort, and of Hashem himself. Why? Because this is where Ayid becomes where he comes totally united with Hashem in, in Tefillah. Not like in the case of Torah, where you're learning definitely, you're learning, but, but you, are, you are sort of like a, a participant in it, but the real thing that you're learning is Hashem's, Hashem's wisdom, not yours. Can I tell this guy not to... Uh, Yes. Shut him off, right? I'm sorry, I have to do that. In deference to my friends over here, you can have the sync song all the time. Commercial break? Uh, commercial break. <coughs> And then, so these are the first two. One is Bikuli uh, Truma, it's Hashem's Truma. The second one is Trumosi, where the Truma, this which Yid brings, and where Hashem, where Hashem's participation is combined in the same word, showing how closely the Yid is related there with Hashem. That's the first to Tfila, to Tafu. And then the third one, it says, playing the Zoy Satruma. No mention of Hashem and no reference to as to whom the Truma is given. Yeah, but it's there, they mention it in the first Truma is referring only to the human effort, to our effort, to our offering. No mention of, of Hashem in that, in that, in that uh, gift, in that uh, effort. Uh, what does that refer to? That refers to, it says to mitzvahs. Mitzvahs includes all human activities throughout the day. When a person goes out and he, he, um, he works and does mitzvahs, that points out an interesting Indian. Korbonis, which is the second category of tefillah, Korbona is also, you take a sheep, that is a mundane thing, mundane, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not holy, and you offer it to the Mishpun, to the, to the, to the, to the Mishbeach. So you're making something mundane, you make something holy. However, over there, there is a secondary, there is a middle step. First you take the sheep, at that point the sheep is completely mundane but also the world. And you declare it as holy. You have to first be marked this sheep. You can't bring under Mizbeah. You can take a sheep and put on Mizbeah. You can't do that. That's called Mali Hulim Boazor. Hulim means you can't bring Hulim, something that is not declared holy, into the into Mizbeah. First it has to be declared holy, dedicated, and then you can bring in with this. Whereas the third category, when you do mitzvahs throughout the day, you give dokir, 
you take money out of your pocket and give it to the doctor. You don't first say, this is stock and then give it. You take it out of your pocket and you give it. Without any dedication. You know, this is where the world object, the object as it is part and parcel of the world itself, is given to us. Is, 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 you do a mitzvah with it. Without first dedicating it to Hashem. Excuse me? What do you say about Torah? Torah? Yeah. No, Torah is to start with is from Hashem. But for bonus, you have to dedicate it. This, these three categories, in general, can be, in, in, in terms of human uh, avoider, can be, so to speak, allocated in the, the various periods. Toil is a time when you're, when you're learning toil. Tfil is a time when you're davening. But these are all things that you do, you are, so to speak, within a holy environment. Then you go out of the holy environment, you go back to Chicago, <laughs> right? And there is where you do the real work. Because ultimately, the ultimate purpose, Kavala, that Hashem had in creating the world, is that the world itself should be transformed into a dira, into a, a, a receptacle for Hashem. Definitely have to go all the way into the total mundane, mundane uh, environment and transform that. As long as you are within a holy environment, you have not really affected the world directly, and therefore the ultimate purpose has not yet been affected. So the ultimate purpose is in the third category, where you go and you, you, and, and, and you take something which is completely mundane, in its mundane state, you make kedusha out of it. You use it for kedusha. Now there is another interesting point that the Rebbe makes in in, in uh, analyzing this psukim, and this will reveal to us a very uh, important. Element. The other points out as follows. It's true that there is an a, there is a, a, a allusions allusions. There is a, a reference to all three trumas. Yikoli truma, trumasi, and zeza truma. But there is a difference in how they are alluded to. The last truma. Vazezat Rumor, that is described in great detail. Vazezat Rumor said, Tikkun Mitum, this is what you should take from them, Zohar, Vachasa, from Kreishas, Vosphelos, Vyardoma, Mesila, so you're taking things, everyone illuminated, illuminated, illuminated separately. And as she explains there, that each one of these things that are mentioned in the Apostle were actually necessary to build the Mishka. Even the stones for the aphid are mentioned. Even the stones for the for the uh, for the chayshin um, are mentioned. Shayam and Avnimiluyin, everything in detail. Whereas the first two are just mentioned in in a, 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 almost indirectly, like by hint. There is no clear reference there. Just at the front, of course, the Prophet mentions the word truma two more times, Ahom saying that these two trumas refers to the other two trumas. But there is no clear stand pointer. This is what I'm talking about. That this is a truma for Adanim and this is a truma for the for the Kabbalists. It doesn't it does not mention that the Prophet. So in detail the Prophet men refers to mentions only the third truma. The first two I just alluded to almost in passing.
This is to tell us that even though that the first two, which is Torah and Tefillah, are really, so to speak, the main effort that a person has, he has to learn Torah, which requires a lot of effort and concentration and um, refinement to refine his mind so that he should be able to understand Torah. And then in Tefillah, he has to clear his mind, clear his heart, and, and truly, so to speak, concentrate and, and, and connect to Hashem. These are very engaging and deep um, um, uh, elements in Avoida. The third one is, it doesn't require much preparation. You, you, you take a penny or you, and you give it away. It doesn't require much human effort. Except the fighting with the Yitzhahara, but otherwise it's, uh, it's an easy thing. And yet, that is the most, that is the most discussed in the person. What does that tell us? It tells us that despite the fact that Torah and Tefillah are of extreme importance, the real importance of Torah and Tefillah is in order to provide a person with the depth of knowledge and understanding and with the depth of feel and dedication in Tefillah so that when he goes on to the, into the world, he will do what he has to do. And be able to, to face the world and do what he has to do. He won't get lost there. So yes, these are important and wonderful things, and these are these these apply, so to speak, and touch the person very deeply, and they actually, so to speak, require a much a very great great dedication on part of the person, and they touch the person all the way deep into his soul, because to understand Torah, you have to go in the depths of your seichel. And, and, and to touch the soul, and certainly in feel, and yet, in terms of fulfilling a, our mission in life, in terms of fulfilling the mission and the purpose for which Rebbe should create the world and put Eden into this world, it is the third category where that is really accomplished. And these two are only, of, uh, so to speak, serve for that purpose. This is why in the Torah they are mentioned only in a hinting, in an elusive, in an allusion, rather than directly discussed. Okay. This is basically this wonderful Sikh of Moreb. And as we usually do, and ultimately, um, all in your name of Hasidus, Torah in general, Hasidus in particular, the ultimate uh, purpose um, is to find oneself in it, find how it speaks to us. And what it means, what it means to each individual, and to us as a group. Um, <clears throat> there are various difficulties, various misyoyness, um, it's called challenges that a person finds himself in, is is is, is um, confronted with when he is in yeshiva. Because when you're sitting in yeshiva, you're sitting and learning, and it's a wonderful thing, you're learning wonderful things, hopefully you're learning wonderful things and you're really learning wonderfully. But then, 
you ask yourself the question, you know, <clears throat> what's the point? Okay, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. So what, what have I, what is the accomplishment here? What is the ultimate accomplishment? So this is what we learn from, from this from this psukim and what we learn from the Rebbe Sikhs. It is true that ultimately you have to go and build a whole mishkan for which you require all kinds of different things. Not just silver, but all kinds of different things. Gold and copper and, and wool and all so forth to build a whole mishkan. Which means you have to Transform the whole world, and then and, and confront it, and in its in its level, in in, in outside of this matters. But what is it that is going to be the or, or that is going to support that effort? What will make it possible to confront the world later? And not only to confront it, but actually to to illuminate it. Instead of being influenced by the world, you should come out and be the the illuminators, the lamplighters, the one who 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 brings light to the world. It is it is. <coughs> A, 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 a historical principle which means this is true throughout history throughout Jewish history that the Jewish people are a very very small minority and they're always a minority almost an infinitesimal uh, uh, unnoticeable minority facing a huge majority And it is it, naturally, so to speak, if we would were to to compare these two camps, so to speak, this confrontation that he faces, we compare them naturally. He would say he would just dissipate into nothingness. How was I eat face to face this? And yet, the fact. The facts speak for themselves, and at this point we have facts of 3,000 years. That not only did we survive, but we actually influenced the entire world. We don't realize, even though the world still needs a lot of improvement, okay, but we don't realize what the Jewish people have accomplished in the world, how they transformed the world over these years. I thought I'd shut you off. Hopefully you won't answer that. No, that's, that's a different guy. That's a different guy. Okay, that's not a phone. That's, that's a, a musical. Okay. We, can, we, can, we can complain about that. <coughs> Jewish people, as they have mingled, so to speak, in the world, in their small minority against an overwhelming majority, <clears throat> have influenced the majority to acquire a human face. Over the years, the world has been changed, has been, has been brought to, you know, to, to a human uh, level. People were, were animals. Human beings were animals. I'll give you an example. Uh, we have, in the history books, we have all kinds. We have the Greeks, we have the Romans, we have the uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, right, the Babylonians and this and the and, and, and Persians and all that. 
You have no idea how barbaric these people were. You don't have an idea, right? No, the movies don't portray it properly. Huh? <laughs> the movies don't portray it properly. No, all heroes, right? <laughs> They're They're nice barbarians. Huh? They're nice barbarians. They're nice barbarians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's normal violence between each other behind them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Do you know that a wrestling match in Rome uh, and a, a wrestling match wrestling match for the entertainment of the populace ended in death mm -hmm. probably starting in death too it isn't okay. you understand this was entertainment for parents today Today, even the the, the um, <coughs> bullfights, the world is already saying, "Hey, it's passionless, right? It's bullfights." <laughs> These are the same the same people that that used to enjoy seeing a person being killed on the stage. You do it today too in some countries. <clears throat> this transformation and it is really a transformation like you said in, the, in some countries where there were Jewish people have not been governed by <clears throat> um, I recently read a story of somebody uh, who was stranded in some in some place, and um, in any case, he got permission to to go into the public school, and he asked in, in, somehow, and he came into the school and he asked, "Who of you has ever seen a Jew?" kids. In any case, this is, this is a, a, a reality. There are people in the world who don't know what a Jew is. And those who don't know what a Jew is are still barbarians. How is it, what, what, does, how does a Yid carry this through? A Yid carries this through because of the depth of his soul. Um, uh, there's an interesting phenomenon that I myself uh, kind of was privy to. I used to work in, 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 in I used to work in, in, uh, in, in the business field, in the business world. And uh, then there was, there was a, a, a guy, there was a guy with an Italian guy. And we were talking one time and he says, if you need a doctor, who do you go to? He says, who do you go to? A Jewish doctor. <coughs> Why do you go to a Jewish doctor? Even though he's a doctor, he's not a doctor, he's not a he didn't learn a chesidus, but you go to a Jewish doctor. You know Why? Because a Jewish doctor is so much smarter than a goy. Not true. Not because he's smarter, because he has a better head. Because he had a better feel for life. He has a different soul. He's a human being. So him, human life is human life in the full sense of the word. Not because he understands the anatomy of the human body better than a guy. But it means something different to him. He has much more respect if he has a sense of it. That's when you go to Jewish doctor. These are things 
Now it's saying, okay, Eden, but these people who got lost someplace in Anavula, they didn't go to Yeshiva, they didn't learn Chidus. They are Eden and they carry this message. And we, who, who uh, were merited, who had this who had the opportunity to, yes, to learn, we support, give them moral support. There was this, when, when, in the time when, when the Russian Eden was suffering in Russia, and they couldn't, they were not allowed to, to, to you know, in, in the, in the restrictions that they had were, were totally subhuman. And um, so the Rebbe encouraged, the Rebbe said, but Nayid here learns and talents, this gives them moral support over there. Because we, we, are, we are all one people, and, and it's what, what one does here automatically translates in the strength of another need. So, <clears throat> here's the point that I want to kind of bring across. We sit and learn here. And as we are learning, we saying to myself, okay, but this is not the end of the road. This is just a step in the right direction. What's the next step? And we come, become, so to speak, concerned. We, can, we can't really concentrate on this step because we are concerned about the next step. So I want that to, to explain that you have to understand that this step is of utmost importance. The deeper you absorb this step, the more prepared you will be for the next step. And the more successful you will be in the next step. There is no reason at all, there's no need to be concerned about the next step while you're involved in, in this. The, the, the greatest thing that one can do in yeshiva, if you have a moment when you are, when you are engrossed in learning whatever you're learning, a Rashi, a Tosfos, a piece of a Tanya, whatever it is, that you're totally engrossed and you don't know of anything else except this, this piece of, of Torah that you're learning, trying to, with, with all your mind to understand and to absorb it in your mind, this is, this is your Ganeidu. This is the uh, Odin, you know, uh, the Odin, like we said, the Odin in the Mishkan. The Mishkan had tall boards, ten amas tall. And on top of the boards were curtains, three layers of curtains. And these boards stood by the weight, of, weight down of these Ardoni. These were the bases. And they carried these boards, they carried the, 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 um, um, <coughs> the curtains and provided for the carbonates. This is what the Torah says. When you learn Torah, this is called truma. You're giving off your time, you're giving off your effort. But this truma that you're giving is, is truma, is, is Hashem's truma. You're learning Hashem's Torah. Why is that you're learning Hashem's Torah? As I mentioned many times in the past, and I want to bring it in, in uh, quickly, the Torah, as you're learning, and you're trying to understand it with, with our seichel, it may appear, and we should never make a mistake, it may appear that the logic that we are learning is simple human logic. And the whole Torah is based on this human logic. And I explained many, many times. You have to understand. We are using human logic in, to absorb and to know what the Torah says. But the actual 
message itself is a godly message. It's not a human message. It's a godly message, a completely different thing. I can mention many times even the simplest thing. Do not steal in the toilet. And do not steal in, in, common, in common law are two different principles. Completely two different principles. Torah, learning Torah, Torah puts, puts us into Hashem's world. Not into a good human world, but into Hashem's world. And therefore it gives us a completely different, it gives us the strength to walk out into the world and to transform the world. And to well, transform the world and carry out our own lives in a proper way. Because we have the other, we have the, 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 the powerful, the strong base upon which we are built. And this occurs in those moments when one, when one learns in a way that, even if it's for a short moment, in those moments when one learns in a way where he is totally oblivious, oblivious, unaware of anything else, but of the Torah that he learns, this is the moment that he is actually absorbing all the strength of the Torah. Because Torah, it says, you have to take it in. Not that you're not learning it, you are taking it. In order to take it, you have to be fully dedicated to absorb, to absorb it and to receive it. So no matter how much time a person has, he has a month, two months, a half a year, whatever time it is, the important thing is that during that time, it is done with full, with a clear mind, and, and a full taking it all in. This taking it in, this is what gives him the strength to accomplish the most important part of, of, of our mission, which is the third category, going out and, 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 and building and building our lives in the world. That said, we always do, and we want to wish each one of us here enormous success to dig in and to get the full, the full impact of the strength of our Nishamas, strength of, our, of the Torah. And with that, we can go and, and confront the whole world and build our own lives. Our lives are not based on psychology, are not based to, on, on any kind of, of, of a worldly structure. It's based on an Ashoma power. And we, we, we can accomplish absolutely everything, anything. each one of us as I said those moments of full clear dedication this is the moment when we live when we get our strength you know it's interesting it just occurred to me to demonstrate, illustrate the concept today there is a, a very popular Indian it's extremely important to do exercise you heard about that, right? Yeah. Who didn't? Yeah. Huh? You didn't? Exercise, it's extremely important. Right. But it, it's interesting. Right? So you have to do exercise. And they prescribe, right, in front, you have to do a half hour, whatever it is. The important thing is this. You can do exercise and do exercise and exercise. If you don't reach a certain pinnacle, you have, it's a waste of time. Ah, exactly. Right? Yep. If you don't reach a certain pinnacle... Why bother? What? So why bother? Why bother? Right. <laughs> <laughs>
Don't reach that pinnacle. You wasted your time. <coughs> I know you have to run, whatever it is, and, and, and uh, but it has to be that duration of time and that speed, and uh, you have to uh, breathe a certain uh, whatever it is, and if, and otherwise it's like nothing. If this is true, the Gashmis, how much more true this is the Gurmis? And I'm not saying I should show them that if you don't reach that point, you haven't learned. You have learned. But the real, the real strength, the real effect of the learning is those moments where, when we, we forget completely about the rest of the world. And we are fully into this which we are learning. The outer web explains in Tanya, you learned even recently because it's to say that they, they, they started Tanya fresh, I don't know. The outer web says that when a person learns Torah, during the moment that he's learning Torah, his mind is fully embraced by the Torah. Which means his, there's nothing else. His, his whole world is, is the Torah that he's learning. Those moments that one experiences this embrace, this is what puts a person in, 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 his, in the true world and gives him the strength to overcome everything. To overcome confrontation from the world and confrontation from the inside, from his own, it's a horror, his own distractions. Hashem should help that each one of us here and elsewhere, the last moments of the scholars should be able to break through and, 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 and acquire all the strength that we need to go through the border. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, what did you say? I said thanks. What did I say? Time, what? What did it say? Yeah. It says, I uh, inner thank you from every fiber of my being. Thanks for enlightening me. I didn't ask what you said. I said what I said. Oh. And then what? Huh? And then what do you say with what? What did I say? You're thanking me. Yeah, I, I, I'm thanking you for enlightening me to the whole thing of Ayyakuli Truma. Okay.